Let's go to the last power question, dinosaurs. Now, we covered dinosaurs yesterday morning, but I want to add one more piece to it. It's about asking the right question about dinosaurs. The common question is, what happened to them? Well, that's easy. They died. So we don't have to go any further than that. But that's the common question. The power question is, where did they come from? That's the power question. Where did the dinosaurs come from? Now, I've been to museums all over this world. What do I see in museums? Dinosaur bones. I look at all these textbooks. What do I see? Pictures of dinosaurs. What's missing? All the thousands and thousands of transitions that led up to the dinosaurs. Why are they not in the museums? I was recently in a debate with a very, very angry atheist. This man was screaming. He was really angry. So finally I got around to asking him this question. Where did the dinosaurs come from? And I told him, I don't find any transitions in the museums. And his answer was this, and it stopped the whole discussion. He said, Mike, we have all those transitions. And I said, where? And he responded, they're in the back rooms in the museums. <laughs> that was the best he could do. That, folks, is called a very big bluff. And he got caught, and that ended the debate. He had just lost. This is what's common, though, in our education system. Bluffing. Making things up. That should never happen as teachers. So let's go on. The standard story again. Dinosaurs evolved into existence about 220 million years ago. Interesting story. But let me show you some very honest answers here. The Illustrated Encyclopedia of Dinosaurs. The question of the origin of the dinosaurs is one that has puzzled paleontologists for many years. The Natural History Museum Book of Dinosaurs. Where did dinosaurs come from? That apparently simple question has been the subject of intense debate for over 150 years. Those statements are not allowed in our textbooks, but yet they are honest answers. Smithsonian, that's not a Christian organization, is it? It's about as atheist as you can get. The discussion over where dinosaurs came from in the first place is often overlooked. Hypotheses of dinosaur origins has been just as controversial as those of triggers for the end Cretaceous mass extinction. There's your own Smithsonian, 2010, saying we don't know where dinosaurs came from either. Now, I went through a lot of books. I went through a lot of books looking for transitions. And I, did found, I found one book that was willing to say they have a transition. And they called it a thecondent. And they keep changing the name over time. They keep once they get found out, they change it to something else. But let me show you what they had to say about this, the condit. They were small lizards that ran on two legs and gave rise to giant reptiles collectively known as dinosaurs. So there's their transition. 1995, there's their transition. Let's examine that evidence for just a moment. Here's our thecondit, maybe about this tall, running around on how many legs? Two. And we're being expected to believe that that creature with two legs evolved into another creature like a triceratops with how many legs? Four. Big bony frills, long horns, and left no evidence how it happened. We're also being expected to believe that that same creature evolved into the large sauropod dinosaurs and creatures like stegosaurus and left no evidence at all. Folks, great claims require real evidence. And the evolutionists are unable to produce this evidence. We're being expected to believe evolution by faith, ultimately, which should not be allowed in our science classes. If scientists are unable to produce the thousands of transitions for the origin of dinosaurs, then they're without a foundation. And again, we go here. Why should I accept evolution when you cannot produce the evidence? I already have a faith. Tell me about your faith, and I'll tell you about my faith. And tell me what your faith in evolution has to offer me, and I'll tell you what my faith in Jesus Christ has to offer you. Right back to the gospel. You see, we have a logical and reasonable faith. Four power questions. The origin of the universe. The evolutionists cannot answer that. The origin of life, they cannot answer. The fossil record, they cannot find the transitions. And the origin of dinosaurs, they cannot explain. And there's many, many other power questions we'll be asking that they simply cannot answer. So what is evolution then? It is a faith. 
the Supreme Court has stated that any idea that talks about ultimate questions is a religion. That is from the Supreme Court. Therefore, we are teaching religion in our public schools. And it is the only religion that's being allowed. But we need to end here. The Bible has answers. We know who created, what was created, how it was created, when it was created, and how long it took to create. And don't forget who that creator was. His name is Jesus Christ. We present a lot of information this weekend, but I want to make sure that your focus is not necessarily on the information, but the author and perfecter of all of that information and our faith. And his name again is Jesus Christ. And I'll ask you, do you really know him? Really know him? Thank you very, very much, and God bless you.